Hello everybody and welcome to this lesson from Miss Duckworth's Classroom. Today I'm going to be talking you through how to approach the poetry question and this is for CIE Paper 1 and this is for the Ted Hughes Anthology. This is part one of a two-part lesson series. Today we'll talk about how to approach and plan and in the next one we'll talk about how you write up a successful response. So let's just have a quick overview, just a bit of a reminder of what you need to do for this particular paper. So for your poetry section, you've got roughly 45 minutes. Remember to use your time wisely, so that means reading through the poem, making your notes, making a plan, writing up your response and then checking it. It is going to be much easier if you practice this method beforehand. So the more often you practice, the better, the quicker you will be. And then you'll just be able to go into your exam and very, very quickly move through the steps and produce a successful answer. So today I'm going to talk you through how to approach the question itself, what to do in exam conditions and how to plan. So when looking at a poem, what should you focus on? And this list covers everything that really you should be focusing on um, within your answer. So obviously the content of the poem. So what is it about? What's in there? The themes of the poem. So this will help you when you're talking about it. This will help you when you're trying to analyze the effects of techniques or language, the tone, the message, the issues. So I like to call these the big issues that are explored by the poet and the poet's intention. So what do they want to show you? What effect um, do they want to have over you? How are you supposed to read the poem, for example? How are you supposed to react? So all of these are really important. And these again can be linked back to the language and the techniques. You should make sure that you understand how language is used. And also you should understand the structure and the form. You want to make sure that you're talking about each of these at some point in your essay to show that you've got a good overview of the poem itself and context but only if it's relevant. There may not always be contextual information that helps you to develop your interpretation of a poem. If not, please just don't bolt it on just for the sake of it. If it is there and it's relevant and you can use it to develop your response, please do. If not, don't worry. So how are you supposed to answer this question? What are they looking for? What are you supposed to include in your answer? And really the best way um, to kind of cover that question is to think about the assessment objectives. So here I've just kind of summarized the assessment objectives and I'm just gonna talk you through um, how each one of those will manifest itself in your answer. So for AO1 and AO2, you want to show that you've got good evidence that you've got a good understanding of the poem, the themes, the meaning, the message, the speaker, the different personas, the tone, the perspective, the point of view of the poet. Um, all of this falls under AO2. What you also have under AO2 is, off the back of that, the deeper meaning. So can you make your own inferences? Can you make your own interpretations? Which also kind of links down here to developing a personal response. Also for AO2, you want to think about the poet's intention um, and, like I said, relevant contextual information. Don't use it if you're just going to be bolting on the day that he was born, for example. For AO1, you want to really think about your use of relevant quotations. Now, um, people always ask, how many quotations should I include in an essay? It's a really difficult question to answer. You should have a range. You should have a good selection of quotations. That's what um, is required for this answer. So it's not really um, easy to, to be able to say, oh, you must have this amount of quotations. I will give my suggestions later on for roughly how many you want to try and aim for. But what you really want to focus on is have you supported your point effectively? Have you used enough evidence to really prove what you're trying to say? For AO3, it's the ability to demonstrate a good understanding of how ideas, themes are presented to you. Now, this is talking about the poet's method, the way in which they get their big ideas across to you, the way in which um, they present their own thoughts and opinions. How do they do that? How do they present a speaker to you? How do they reflect a theme? And all of that is to do with their methods. And that, again, is the language, the structure, and the form. You must show that you know why something has been presented in that way. And again, all of that links back up here to you understanding the meaning, the message, what the poem is about, what the poet is trying to relay. So actually, all of these assessment objectives, they work hand in hand. And when you write your essay, you will just fluidly be commenting on all of them. And finally, AO4 is to do with how you write your essay, how you write up your response. You should be presenting your ideas in a coherent and relevant way, which is why I will be giving you a suggestion on how to plan 
your response out just to make sure that you are addressing that and also your ability to develop a personal response in relation to the question so you reading the question reading the poem and then formulating your own response so here is just a very very quick overview i'm actually not going to go through all of this with you you can pause the video and have a look uh, by no means is this an exhaustive list this is just so you have an idea of when you are talking about language, when you are talking about structure and form, because you really do want to make sure that you're showing you can talk about all of them. It doesn't have to necessarily be equal throughout each paragraph, but you do want to show the examiner that you do understand how the poet has used language and what structural um, techniques they have utilized and what the form is and that you can comment on that. I've also included here just some guidance on how you can develop your own response in return in, in regards to analyzing language. So the words, the language that stands out, you can zoom in on a word and really think about the connotations. And I've also given you some questions that really help you to develop your discussion of technique. So let's have a look at a question. Like I said, this is from um, the Ted Hughes anthology. So this is a Ted Hughes question. So just a little reminder up here um, of the details to do with this question. The question we're gonna be looking at today, how does Hughes convey vivid impressions of the weather and its effect in wind? And remember that you will get a copy of the poem in your exam. So do make use of that. Do make sure that you're reading that, you're making notes and you're annotating. Let's have a look at the steps. So there are various different steps that I recommend you go through just to make sure that you cover everything and to make sure that your final essay, your response is ordered, it's coherent, your personal response um, is relevant and it's detailed. So we want to really just make sure we're covering all of these steps. Some of them are relatively quick, take about 30 seconds, some of them are a little bit longer. So we have a variety of different steps that we're going to go through together here. The first one is to read the question and underline the focus. Next, we go to the poem, make a note of what the poem is about. This is definitely going to help you when you go further and you pick out the techniques. Um, also think about what kind of a poem it is. So the form often can link to the content as well. Just quick brainstorm on the themes, the issues that you remember, the tone, the poet's message and intention and the big ideas. And all of this is making reference to AO2. Then we read through the poem again and we just highlight the techniques that are relevant to the question. So you just go through and you quickly with your highlighters, anything that you think that you could use, anything that you think helps you with your response to the question. And then you can make small notes on how the techniques show the focus in the question. And this is to do with your AO3 and poet's method. And we do want to aim for a mixture of language, structure and form. So do just look out for ones that can be doubled up. When I say doubled up, I mean with one quotation, you might be able to talk about two techniques. So you may be able to talk about a metaphor, which is language, but you also may be able to talk about caesura, which is structure. So it's always really clever if you can double up and make sure you're talking about language and structure and form together. And finally, do a very brief plan, pull everything together, have some organisation to your ideas just to make sure that your essay flows and it's coherent. Okay, so let's just have a look at the question. So step one, very, very easy, 10 to 30 seconds, read through the question, underline your focus. So underlining the focus, it helps you with your own, the direction of your essay, but it also helps you when you're going through the poem to know what you need to look out for. This is quite an open question, so how does he convey vivid impressions? Um, so anything that stands out for you mentally, any images that are created. And we're really focusing on the weather and its effect. So we can really talk about a lot of different things here. So step two. Step two is where you make a note of what the poem is about. Now, it can be easy to kind of forget this step and then to just rush on and to go through the poem and think, okay, simile, metaphor, personification, that's what I want to use. But I would urge you to take three, four minutes here just to make some very quick notes on what the poem is about. Because once you do that, everything in this little note box, you can then use that later on. So if you have got um, a simile or a metaphor that you want to talk about, and you think, well, I, I don't really know what I want to say about it, all you need to do is go back to your note box and you can take any of the ideas you've already expressed and you can use that as a way of developing your analysis and your interpretation. So this is an example of a note box that I've created for the poem Wind. So I've just quickly gone through the meaning, the message, the big ideas, a summary, so what the poem is about, the speaker, if it's something that's relevant and something that you really think you can comment on, 
the tone and the themes. And what you're actually giving yourself is you're giving yourself a lot of key vocabulary here that you can use in your answer. So if I was to go through and think, okay, we've got environment, we've got weakness, we've got vulnerability, we've got all of these different words, we've got relationships, um, we've got at its mercy, aggressive, exciting, helplessness, powerful. I've actually done a lot of work here already before I've even started looking at the poem. So I really do urge you just to take a few minutes, collect your thoughts, write down everything that you remember about this poem, everything that you've gone through in lesson, everything that you've gone through in your revision, and just get some ideas done because these key words and phrases, that vocabulary is really going to help you later on. So this is my, my very, very quick overview. So this is about the storm and it's, it's not just about a storm, it's not just about wind, it's about how it brings the environment to life. Um, also shows that in the face of nature, human power is weak and everybody seems helpless in the face of the wind. The storm also has the power to show the vulnerability of the landscape, something that usually um, we see the landscape as, as quite strong, quite powerful, um, something that just exists for us. The poem could also be a metaphor for the couple's relationship, so don't be afraid to offer multiple interpretations here, as long as, you, as, long as it's valid, as long as you can prove it. Uh, there is an opportunity to link to context here, that if you did want to say something like that, so then you could link to maybe Ted Hughes's relationships with various different people in his life. Summary, so the poem records family's awe and terror, again some great words you can use in, in your essay, as they ride out a storm upon the moors and it's there inside their home. So the speaker is describing the storm, we do get the sense that the speaker is at its mercy and it's in first person, all of those are quite important and we're already kind of commenting on form here by acknowledging that it's in first person. So the tone, and again this will help you to understand the effects of the techniques. It's quite aggressive but it's also exciting, there's a lot of anticipation and it's also awe-inspiring to accept that something is bigger than you and has more control and power than you. And then we have the themes um, that, in my opinion, I think Hughes is trying to convey. So we've got this idea of power, power to do with nature, anger, helplessness of man, um, also the fact that nature is a cold, powerful force. So all of this is now going to help me. I've, I've got a really good idea of the poem. I've recalled all of the information. I've retrieved all of that from my memory. And now I'm ready to go to step three and to try and highlight anything that I think will help me answer this question. So, what we're now going to do is to read through the poem and highlight the techniques. We want to make sure that we've got this box in front of us. So just have this and as your notes. So this is what I now know about the poem. Now I have to look for how I know it. So for example, if I wanted to talk about how nature is powerful, I've got this in my notes. Well, how do I know it's powerful? And that's where the poem comes into play. How you know it is because of the way in which Hughes has presented it to you, the language that he's used or the techniques that he's used. So I do recommend at this point, you use a range of different colored highlighters that will really help you focus on, are you talking about language? Are you talking about form? Are you talking about structure? And like I've said here, it's always great to kind of cherry pick your quotations. So don't just pick every quotation. You want to pick quotations that you understand, that you think that you can analyze and talk about in detail. But also a third thing to think about here is, can you be clever with your choices? Can you pick something that you can say more than one thing about? Can you pick something that's got multiple techniques in and it's got interesting vocabulary, just so you can not only double up, but you can layer your analysis. And if you're interested in seeing how to layer your analysis, don't forget to look out for my micro lessons where I do talk about lots of different literature skills that you can embed within your essays. Okay, so I've now gone through the poem. I've used my annotation key down here. You don't have to use the same key as me. Use whichever key um, you feel comfortable with and also whichever colours you have available with you in the exam hall. So I've gone through and I've just thought, okay, these are all the things that I know. This will help me to, to think about which quotations are going to be relevant, which quotations are going to be useful, but also which quotations really help me with this question. And as you can see, I've tried to make sure that I've got a range. And this is really the good thing about highlighting. So initially I went through and I highlighted and I thought, oh my gosh, I've got too many purples. And that does tend to happen. One of the easiest things to talk about is imagery in a poem. Um, so then I went back with my different color highlighters and thought, okay, I need to make sure that I've also got structure and form. So if you have different colored highlighters, you can immediately see on the paper, okay, which one have I neglected? Which one do I need to include? 
So then you move on to your next step is when once you've highlighted, you can just do some very, very quick notes. Now, as you can see, there's an awful lot here. I am never going to be able to talk about all of these quotations in an exam. So once you've highlighted, you then may decide, well, actually, I've highlighted all of these, but from stanza one, I really only like this quotation. And if that's the case, then obviously don't annotate the quotations you don't think you're going to use. So your first step here is you've highlighted, then you want to name the techniques. So you want to show that you understand the techniques that have been used. But what we don't want to do is we don't want to just technique spot. Um, that's not really going to help you in an exam. So you don't want to just say, Ted Hughes has used personification and then you move on. It's no point saying that unless you're going to say why he uses personification, what the effect is, how it supports the themes, how it supports his message. So we're really doing so much more than just technique spotting. So once you have gone through and named the techniques, just to make sure again that you've got language form and structure, then you think about what you can say about them and then you decide which ones can I analyze in depth. And that's where this comes in. So as you can see, I have an awful lot on this slide. You may not have as much as this. This is just so I can show you what it would look like. And as you can see, where I've analyzed, so I've explained and I've analyzed, where I've done that, you will actually see a lot of the key words that I had from my overview box from the very beginning. So personification emphasizes its power, shows the struggle of the field, shows a sense of hopelessness. So all I did is when I was making my own notes for this, I went back and had a look at the box of notes that I made at the very beginning on what it's about and what the tone is and what the theme is and what the big idea is. And you can see that I've just used all of those key words. Vulnerable, we've seen this one before. Struggle, we've seen that one before. Unstoppable. So all of these words and phrases I already had down in my notes. So I've made it much easier for myself to just think about, okay, which technique do I think shows the power? Which technique do I think shows helplessness or hopelessness? And um, so really the notes that you make at the beginning, I did say they would be useful and they do really help you, saves you a lot of time. So this is the next step. You just quickly add some notes. Obviously you will not do in as much detail as I have, but I would like you to see how I've done it. Um, so you just think about that particular technique what is the effect? So we're trying not to be general here. So we, we don't just want to say that everything shows the power of the wind. You want to say how it does that. So for example, enjambment, the fact that the lines continue shows that the wind is continuous and unstoppable. So we've been specific to the technique. So that's another tip from me. Try not to be vague. Um, try not to be too general when you're talking about the effects of the technique. Link it to that specific technique. Why has he chosen enjambment? Why is enjambment effective here? What does it show you about what the poem is about? And in this case, it's the weather. Okay, so we've gone through all of these different steps. And the last thing that we need to do now is a brief plan. So you want to really take all of these ideas and you want to think, about well, okay, what are my main ideas that I want to talk about in response to the question? And then you will decide which of these would go with each different point that you're making, which, which accurately um, reflects and supports the point that you're making. So you want to show, you want to be able to prove what you're saying. So we're going to move on to our plan. So we want to think of our points and then we're going to go back and find evidence to support them. And like I said, there's some, just some questions to help you. So what's the point that you want to make? So how does shoes vividly convey um, impressions of the weather and its effects? So what is my point in response to this question? Once you've got your point, then you start to think about your evidence and you're asking yourself, what does this evidence show? How does it show this? Why does it show it in this way? Am I proving my point with this particular piece of evidence? So here are the ideas that I've come up with in regard to my point. So I've just quickly sketched these down and I thought, okay, I had a look back at all of my annotation. I looked back at the question. I thought, right, what do I want to say? How does he convey vivid impressions of the weather and its effect? What does he show me about the wind? So I think that he shows that the wind is attacking the landscape that the wind is powerful, cannot be restrained. And he also shows how our own vulnerability is highlighted through this sense of danger. So I will th develop these later on in my essay into full topic sentences, but these are just now my ideas. And I'm gonna now find evidence for each one of those. Obviously going to use this, this magical box that I mentioned at the beginning, always coming in useful. If you've noticed, I've referred to it at every step 
of this planning process. So it is very important that you practice um, making these boxes or making these little notes yourself and just get used to using them. So I'm going to transform these, these initial ideas into a proper plan. Now you can plan however you like. Um, this is just my suggestion for how to plan just because it keeps it organized and it also helps when you're writing up your essay but you can write your plan however you want. So when you've got a plan it does mean that your personal response is organized and it's coherent but it also means that you can choose and spend time choosing relevant quotations. What you don't want to do is just randomly select your quotations. They really should um, reinforce the point that you're making. So a plan gives you the headspace to do that. You don't have to have your notes down here because you've actually already got them on your poem. If you didn't have them on your poem, if you'd literally just gone through and highlighted due to time constraints, then you could just highlight the notes here and this helps you to know what to say. So for example, when I'm writing up my essay, what I will do is I'll start ticking things off or crossing them out when I've done them and this just keeps you focused. And I know that when I get to this quotation and I want to analyze it and I want to interpret the meaning, I go over here and I think, okay, well, how can I analyze and interpret the meaning by commenting on technique and by commenting on language? Also helps you if you're color coding it to see just where you're talking about language and structure and form. So I'm actually quite happy with my plan because I know that once I've finished, I will have discussed a range of different techniques, not just language. I have everything in here. So this is my plan. These are the quotations that I've chosen to use. And like I said to you at the beginning, there is no right or wrong answer in terms of how many quotations that you use. You should use a range. Um, so you really want to aim for maybe more than just one per point or one per paragraph. I've gone for however many I think I can talk about. So if you can see, I've got three here, but I've only got two here, and then I've got three here. And I've left three here, the final one, because I can always cut out the last one. If time is running out, nobody will know that I ever intended to put this in. I just don't cover it. And then if that happens, then I've still covered seven quotations. And what I would say to you is always try and start with your strongest point and the quotations that you really think that you can analyze, that you really think you can layer your analysis on. You really want to show off in your first point um, because really that's where you want to impress the examiner and then you will just continue in the vein that you've already started. So this is my suggestion. It will change depending on um, what question you have, how confident you are about the poem, um, but definitely you do want to have a range of quotations to back up each of your points. So thank you very much for taking part in this lesson. I hope that's really helped you in terms of focusing your response to the question and also helping you to formulate your plan. Please check out part two, which is how to write your answer. Thank you very much. Goodbye.